uh, in fact, I'm uh, really glad that this National Symposium on Earthquake, Landslides, and Glacial Hazards, and 7th Annual Convention on Advances in Earthquake Science uh, is being organized by the Indian Society of Earthquake Science and our Depart Department of Geography and Disaster Management. Uh, I'm happy indeed to see a galaxy of distinguished scientists and academics from different institutions uh, for, from our country participating in this very important three-day program. Uh, this program is being held at a time uh, when our university recently conducted the Y20 consultation on climate change and disaster risk reduction on 11th of this month under the aegis of India's G20 presidency. The event was a great success. So uh, with great confidence and with great satisfaction, I, say, I can say that our faculty of earth sciences is one of the very vibrant faculty in our university and uh, which has uh, a mapping even at the global level uh, and of course at the country level too. Uh, and in organizing this Y20 consultation, uh, the major role was played by the Faculty of uh, Earth Sciences in organizing it. Uh, it was a very uh, big event, but was conducted very successfully. Uh, this program is also fourth such program, which is being held in the university on a theme that concerns the society uh, at large. Earlier this month only, our university held two similar programs, one in collaboration with ISRO on Earth Observations for Climate Services and other in collaboration with Indian Institute of Geomagnetism on the theme of climate change. So this gives the audience idea how uh, our university and the Faculty of Earth Science is quite, uh, you know, uh, aware of all these programs and we very frequently conduct them and as uh, Mr. Nazim Saab has already said, we need to conduct these programs very frequently so that uh, not only our uh, research is carried on but we also make our society aware. I would like to make few quick observations. One, I am glad to see participation of not only eminent scientists and academics in this program. But we have resource persons from JNK UT administration like town planning, public works, health and others. This is important because I think the theme of earthquakes, landslides and glacial hazards requires a multi-agency, multi-dimensional and multi-level approach for better outcomes on the ground. While universities can provide a platform for such important deliberations, it's equally important to foster collaborator, collaborations with other line departments, which are important for mitigation of disasters like earthquakes on the ground. Another important aspect of such collaborative programs is the fact it provides an opportunity for young students to learn from experiences and expertise of distinguished scientists who have done a remarkable work in different fields of study and research concerning earthquake sciences and glacial studies. Without such collaborations, it's very difficult to reach, to address new challenges confronting disaster management at several levels in view of the fact that it is a multi-dimensional issue. And uh, is not restricted to any specific area, but is a global issue now. And this learning by our student can go a long way in raising awareness in society on disaster management. Today, I think lots of people are conscious of impacts of disasters, but somehow it appears that we have not been able to consolidate this disaster con uh, consciousness and convert it into an opportunity to maximize disaster awareness in the society, as already it was uh, said by one of the speakers. For this purpose, I think our student can play a great role, especially from departments like geography and disaster management, social work, law, media, and others. Uh, because this theme is very holistic, 
and encompasses several social aspects which need to be taken care of during and after disasters. For example, how we reach to most vulnerable sections of society like specially abled children and women during and after disasters. How we can educate these special groups about disaster mitigation and management skills. Therefore, I think this program is very important, not only from the point of view of scientific deliberations, but also from the point of view of addressing these social concerns. I'm glad to see a wide range of topics and themes being covered during the deliberations, including having a roadmap for disaster management in Jammu and Kashmir. It's important that we have this kind of a roadmap which can feed into policy making on critical areas related to earthquakes and glacial studies, since we all know that JNK is most vulnerable to such natural disasters. With these brief remarks, I wish a great success to this program. And once again, uh, I must thank uh, Professor Rastogi for choosing our university for the collaboration. I do look forward in future also to have many more programs in collaboration. And as uh, Mr. Nazim uh, Zia Khan has already said, uh, they can do some uh, sort of funding to the university if we take up capacity building programs. I would definitely uh, like the Dean Earth Sciences and the other faculty to kindly take up the issue uh, with the state government so that wherever our expertise is required, we can uh, definitely play our role. With these words, I uh, wholeheartedly welcome all the delegates who have come from other parts of India to our university. I wish them a pleasant uh, uh, stay and uh, great success to the event. Thank you very much. The fact that today we are sitting here discussing the three most important uh, aspects of disaster in Jammu and Kashmir, it is basically similarly today in India also we are having, it's a coincidence actually, we are having a national level seminar happening in Sikkim Gangtok for all the Himalayan states on the same three topics. So it's thanks to the Kashmir University that they organize such symposiums, they organize such seminars. I have been coming uh, time and again to deliver lectures here to uh, see that there is a lot of capacity building involved in these symposiums. Because effectively, if you see disasters come without any warning to anybody, everyone is expecting government to interfere, intervene, try and help the citizens. In fact, there's not much time. A disaster strikes in such a way that government cannot react. There is hardly any time for government to react. So what we have decided, as Professor Gupta also said, to build resilience. We need to now understand that capacity building or preparedness for disasters is equally important to mitigating disasters. And I think these kind of symposiums, these kind of collaborative efforts that are put by so many organizations across the country bring about focus of the government towards disaster management. Talking about government, I think I should just uh, inform everybody here that in Jammu and Kashmir, we have a very strong uh, structure of disaster management in place now. Uh, over the last few years, we've seen uh, very uh, heavy disasters. We saw the 2014 flood. We've seen the 2005 earthquake. And this has brought about a significant shift in administration to understand how to tackle disasters. So we have a three-tier structure in place in our SDMA. The SDMA itself is headed by the head of the state. At present, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor is the chairperson of the SDMA. So that shows the kind of intent the government has, that disaster management is such a serious topic that the head of the state is heading the SDMA. And then we have the structure coming down 
towards the divisional levels because we have two divisions. So we have the divisional level disaster management authorities uh, headed by the divisional commissioner of Kashmir and the divisional commissioner of Jammu. And of course, then we have the 20 districts and the deputy commissioner of each district is the chairperson of the DDMA, the district disaster management authority. So if just for knowledge sake, anyone says uh, who is the person responsible for any disaster that occurs in my area, so it is the deputy commissioner actually who's officially been designated as the authority to look after disasters. So a lot of people come about, a lot of the students in fact, because the, the uh, DM students, those who are undergoing the course here, they are very much keen on getting uh, some kind of a job, some kind of a, uh, this thing with disaster management uh, uh, authorities. Yes, we are certainly looking into that also and I'm happy to inform that uh, the uh, SDMA has recently approved uh, for uh, recruiting disaster management consultants, disaster management uh, experts in government. So um, hopefully you will, some of you, if not all, some of you will be a part of my department. You will be shifting over from this university to uh, my side. The thing is that in JNK, we were also fortunate to have a very strong uh, police force. And this is where the SDMA thought that why not to utilize this force and they have created two battalions specifically for disaster response and they are known as the SDRF Battalion 1 and the SDRF Battalion 2. So full dedicated battalions given just for disaster relief. And that has made a lot, large impact because every year we have the, the Amarnath Yatra, you know, it's, it's, it takes place at uh, such a place that the uh, entire uh, physical, the geography, if you see, of Baltal as well as the Chandanwadi uh, side, they are very vulnerable to flash floods, they're very vulnerable to cloud bursts, they're very vulnerable to GLOF as we are talking about. Last year, in 2022, we had a major incident. There were almost approximately 14 lives that were lost, the Yatris, because of the, the event that occurred. It was a cloud burst, flash flood followed and it swiped off all the uh, tents and accommodations that had been made along the route. But what did not come in the news, you might have heard that 14 people lost their lives, but what did not come in the news is that at that very moment there were 22,000 Yatris on the route. It was a massive tragedy that would have occurred had the SDRF deployment not been in place and those boys have actually rescued that number of people. 22,000 number of people were rescued. <laughs> Otherwise, the proportion of the tragedy, we would still have been having a memorial day today for that particular day, had it not been. So, you know, in my department, I tell uh, uh, the media people, they come and interview me sometimes, I tell them that uh, this is one department uh, which should not come in the news. Because whenever there is a news about a disaster, that means something has gone very wrong. So most of the activity being done by my department will not be talked about. As long as it is not talked about, that means we are doing a good job. I think this is a very appropriate place to have this sort of symposium. Uh, on the earthquake, landslides, glaciers, we have people from all over the country. Particularly if you see uh, the geology, being a geologist I can say that we have huge deposit of karevas. And uh, it is still not very well understood how this kareva lakes developed. And uh, why it developed and then how uh, it drained out and now what we have is Dull Lake and Wooler Lake and then we have this river Jhelum that is going on. And during its development, lots of fault developed and lots of uh, thrusting and nap activities. So all these things uh, have, as you can see, uh, landslides and uh, many other uh, problems that needs to be understood. So that is one thing. And then uh, Kashmir has lots of glaciers. Okay, so to understand the glaciers, how they are, the health of the glacier and how they are going to behave, because not many of us know that there are lots of uh, high altitude lakes or, or 
glacier related lakes and uh, how much we have understanding is really a big question so this is a big challenge for the local students and the teachers of this university professor ramshu unfortunately he is unable to come because they have they have been working and then definitely our uh, department of geography sultan sahab and his group and parvez so i expect as uh, uh, our rastogi sahab has suggested i will i am very very strong opinion that uh, we should try to bring this to a level of center of excellence whatever help will be will be required and definitely dr mishra is there whom i, I can always uh, request to come and help from the moe side okay so we should try to do that similarly there are also problems of flood whenever there is rain uh, even uh, normal rain or a bit of rain yesterday i was just seeing that the the, uh, the river has gone up okay so it's because of the and then there are possibilities of flood so why there, there is flooding because there was indiscriminate uh, deforestation and lots and lots of uh, loose material or you know your erosion takes place when you cut the trees and they are all filling up the lakes and the rivers so they are becoming shallow so even when there is uh, normal rain there are scare of flood so all these factors i think it is very very important that the local earth scientists both geologists geographer geophysicists of the country should get uh, together and then the local uh, students and teachers should get together and try to understand do research on this and this will be very very important thing so from that angle i think this is a very uh, important seminar which is going to happen and many people who are not from kashmir will also know and take interest uh, in looking after these and definitely i would request uh, nazim sahab uh, to give all the support to the university and such research activities in the UT of Jammu and Kashmir. We have to learn to live with earthquakes or for natural disasters. And that is what I think is something we should stress on. And I'm very happy that uh, in charge for the national, for the state disaster management authorities here. And uh, there are ample examples how such resilient societies have been developed globally. Let me give the example of Kathmandu. We had on 15th of April, 2015, 25th of April, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake. About 8,000 lives were lost. In a similar earthquake in 1934, we had lost 30,000 lives. From 1934 to 2015, the population has more than tripled. But the number of lives lost has become much less. Why? Because Nepal observes a earthquake day. Every 16 January is the earthquake day, and there is exercise, what you should do, etc., etc. Whereas other areas of our country, for example, the 1905 counter earthquake killed 20,000 people. And then a little <coughs> west of it, we had the Muzaffarabad earthquake in 2005, which killed 87,000 people. So the population increase, urbanization, etc., we didn't take care of it. A small country like Haiti, in 2011, they had an earthquake of magnitude 7.0. More than 300,000 lives were lost. Last year, two years ago, they again had an earthquake bigger than that, only 3,000 lives lost. So what Haiti could do, why can't we do it in India? Why can't we do it for Kashmir? A very good morning to all of you present here today. It is indeed a matter of immense pleasure for us to welcome our esteemed guests and dignitaries to this national symposium on earthquake, landslide and glacial hazards and seventh annual convention on advances in earthquake science. 
the symposium and convention are being jointly organized by Indian Society of Earthquake Science, ISES, and the Department of Geography and Disaster Management, University of Kashmir, from 25th to 27th of May, 2023. First of all, let me avail this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude to Professor Nirofar Khan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Kashmir, for her kind consent to preside over this inaugural function. In fact, organizing this prestigious event at the University of Kashmir, where, the, where her brainchild, and we are thankful to her as a department for reposing her trust and faith in us. Thank you, ma'am. We would avail this opportunity to wholeheartedly welcome Mr. Nazim Zai Khan, IAS, Secretary to the Government, Department of Disaster Management, Relief, Rehabilitation, Reconstruction, Government of Jammu and Kashmir, who is our chief guest today. He has always been very supportive to all our academic endeavors, especially those related to capacity building for effective disaster management. We welcome you, sir, with this hope that we would continue to work and collaborate together in future also in order to build a disaster resilient society. So we are privileged to welcome Padam Shri, Professor Harsh K. Gupta, ex-member National Disaster Management Authority and ex-secretary, Department of Ocean Development, Government of India, whose presence has today here today is a blessing for all of us. Thank you for being here, sir. We warmly welcome Professor Talat Ahmed, our guest of honor today for his esteemed presence. He has been an epitome of encouragement and inspiration for the geographers, geologists, and other earth scientists. Sir, we are privileged to have you here today. We also welcome all other respected delegates from various sister institutions, organizations, universities, and government departments, etc., who have traveled all along from the nook and corner of the country to attend this national symposium. We have a galaxy of intellectual and academicians who have come from all corners of the country. And we, as a Department of Geography, I would basically just apprise our August dignitaries on the dice and then on the dice and off the dice. So the Department of Geography and Disaster Management is a department which has been established in 1979. And then it has been offering two, uh, two programs, degree programs, PG programs, one in geography and another in disaster management. And uh, under the able guidance of Professor Talat Ahmed Saab, we started this journey in 2012 in disaster management. In 2014, we upgraded it to a postgraduate degree program. And since then, this department has, is trying to establish its credentials among the committee of the departments, disaster management departments in the country. And we are striving hard so that we could basically project this department as a center for excellence. For that, we will be submitting certain proposals to the different agencies. Uh, and we hope all these August dignitaries would be helpful to us and they would basically uh, hold our hand and help us in, in, in acquiring that center for excellence status in the, in the, in the, in the country. The aim uh, of Indian uh, Society of Earthquake Science is to further the science of uh, earthquake, uh, earthquakes and uh, different fields of earthquakes, uh, how it, I mean, you can reduce the effect of uh, earthquake, how you can do risk medication. Uh, so like that, so many uh, organizations are involved, so many disciplines. So the main aim was to have say synergy between uh, engineers, uh, geologists, uh, disaster management and uh, other uh, with the seismologists. So uh, at least they, the seismologists can give really what is needed for uh, the uh, engineering community. So uh, with that uh, respect, uh, we uh, wherever we go, we try to uh, energize uh, the development in this direction. Uh, I will give an example that in uh, Gujarat, Dr. Sumer Chopla, director is here. Uh, using, uh, doing so many studies which are needed for this, we made uh, several, uh, say, uh, hazard maps, uh, say, like uh, spectral, spectral acceleration, PGA, uh, uh, VS-30, uh, so many things which are needed for making uh, the realistic uh, earthquake uh, hazard assessment. 
they should be there. So uh, I suggest that in the university, maybe as uh, Professor Parvez was telling, we should have some kind of, uh, say, one uh, say, uh, center can be opened, say, for uh, these kind of studies. Uh, and also, it can be developed later on in a center of excellence. Because you need uh, uh, the uh, here expertise, here you need the awareness, and you need the maps which can make uh, the uh, earthquake resilient society. Uh, now, uh, say, uh, seeing the future, uh, so much uh, high development which is going on, there will be demand for making maybe more uh, higher uh, high-rise buildings and things like that. So we need to have, uh, this is necessary uh, for the state and we should uh, have that. Ada and a very good morning to all of you. I'm Dr. Mohammad Shafi, Senior Assistant Professor, Department of Geography and Disaster Management, University of Kashmir, Srinagar, your host for this inaugural session. I take the honor to welcome the galaxy of intellectuals, dignitaries, academicians, scientists, delegates, and scholars who are with us in this inaugural session of the three-day National Symposium on Earthquake, Landslide, and Glacial Hazards. It marks the seventh annual Convention on Advances of Earthquake Sciences, AES 2023. The symposium is jointly organized by Indian Society of Earthquake Sciences in collaboration with Department of Geography and Disaster Management, University of Kashmir, Srinagar. The symposium is sponsored by Ministry of Earth Sciences and CSIR4PI and University of Kashmir, Srinagar. 